In this episode, I sit down with my friends Paul and Dave, co-host of Wealth Warehouse Podcast, military vets, actually military attack pilots who went from knowing nothing to practicing the infinite banking concept and expanding from three policies to 13 policies, 37-fold increase in premium payment to educating the public, others on a weekly basis through their podcast. I had fun and hope you enjoy listening. You know, Dave alluded to this is when you find something that you love to do, I don't look at it as work. Yeah. I love the client interaction, uh, even at 530 in the morning. And, and he'll listen to this. He listens to you guys. And uh, and I, I love talking. You know, we'll talk for an hour from 530 in the morning to 630 in the morning. We both have our coffee. The kids are all still sleeping and our kids go to the same school. And I love that interaction. Um, you know, client that gets it, pays significant premium. Um, although I'm going to drop a dime on him. He didn't go to me first. He thought one of the guys I could, I can do this on my own. I'll go to the company and just get a policy and. Oh, yeah. Tell them, tell them what I want. (laughs) Tell them what I want and they'll build it for me. And yeah. Yeah. Maybe. Well, it's life insurance. We all do the same thing. The home office, they know. Right? They know, yeah. <laughs> right. They're all paying significant premium relative to their income, I'm sure. <laughs> it's a great question to ask. That's right. How much premium are you paying for your policies? Yeah. <clears throat> well, what the, uh, you know, and I'm not aware of it, and uh, the, the group that has all the designations, it wrote a paper or did a podcast on infinite banking. Have your clients been sending you those, or how, how did y'all discover that? And I, <clears throat> you know, is it... I watch YouTube, so I'm out there just, you know, I've watched these guys, I've watched some of their videos before, because I like to see what's out there. I like to see what's being said, um, because I think it can help me better serve the general public if I can say, well, this is what the general public is being told. And, you know, in the the short video, there were two, there was a 36 minute video or so that was the full length, and there was like a six minute maybe clip where they're really, from their life insurance inside, are really getting into it. And... And I texted Dave. I was like, hey, very little, if anything, that these guys said is remotely true. Yep. Right. And and it's not their fault. They have no idea what they're talking about. Well, which is But they fault. should do better. Yeah. My gosh. I used to, you know, we've talked about it before. I think Ryan has written, an, I know Ryan has written an article. Like <clears throat> Gary North, you know, N- Nelson used to love his his writings and he wrote very well and I think he was really a historian. Um, but he, he got into the Christian world as a, you know, finance guy, economist, whatever. And, uh, just, he wrote an article. It's like, let us pray P R E Y talking about the life insurance Uh, agent, uh, you know, praying. And I read that and Oh my gosh, I was livid, you know, and I'm, I'm calling Nelson. I'm like, how can you ever promote this guy? You know, and how how can you even like his writings? And uh, he said, "Well, James, you know, he does. He just doesn't know, and that doesn't mean everything he writes is, you know, not good." And I'm like, "Whatever." <laughs> <laughs> and then and then I wound up meeting that guy's son-in-law, you know, at an event. And anyway, I, and there's other articles out there that just shred life insurance or infinite banking concepts or whatever, um, and. I don't seek them out. You know, they stock us on social media just like they stock all the ads and whatever stock everyone else. But um, if there's, you know, if I talk to someone and they're like really negative, I'm like, here, go read all that. Here's the most negative thing you can find about the infinite banking concept and just go get all you want, you know. And that may, you know, I don't know, maybe we need to increase our views. I don't know. Maybe that is worth uh you know, talking about it so other people can go find it. You know, if you want to support your disagreement or disbelief, you know, there you can do it that way. Right. Well, I always thought <clears throat> Dave was always good about, I remember some of our earlier episodes, <clears throat> you know, we did one that was like, who are who are we and why do you care or whatever? And, and you know, Dave's point was, hey, don't trust what we're saying. Go out there and explore this for yourself. You know, read that book, read this book, listen to this material, educate yourself. You don't have you don't have to trust what's coming out of our, out of our mouths. It's the truth, of course, but <clears throat> and it's genuine, which I think is uber important to be successful. Um, 
but don't trust what we're saying. Uh, but if you don't get that, I'm not going to chase you. Right. And yeah. it's, it's a requirement to not just take us at our word. Mm. You can't just don't take me at my word. Mm-hmm. If you say, well, I trust you. I believe what you're saying. Let's Mm-mm. do this. Well, no, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you need to do some, some self-education um, because then, you know, that's, that's no better than, you know, who's to say the next guy is not going to come along and convince you of something else Yeah, and you trust him. And all of a sudden you're canceling your policy. The only way to lose in this is to quit. Yep. So, <laughs> you know, and then, you know, what I've helped do is harm your family because I put you into something you don't understand. Yep. You have no idea why you're doing it. You just do it because you trust me. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it, it's got to go beyond that. <clears throat> yeah. Gina. Well, it's like drag him in, drag him around. You know, yeah, yeah, I don't want to, I don't want to know just, you know, what, I've got to read something. I've heard that many times. These guys, you know, they're not making me read anything. Well, have fun. You know, whoever those guys are. And why do you think they're not even encouraging you <clears throat> to right. read anything or educate yourself? Right. Cause why, they, why do you think they haven't read it. Yeah. They don't get it. No. Yeah. But they're swinging life insurance, which is fine. You know, have fun, go get paid, but that's not infinite banking. Right. Now we always tell our clients, and I know you do too, is that, you know, I'm not trying to be your banker, <laughs> but you're you're a money lender. Yeah, right. That's yeah, right. that's true. Uh, <clears throat> but I'm, you know, I want you, you know, paying high premium relative to your income is you, you don't know anybody else doing this. Yeah, except me. You know, at this point in their in their time frame, there's many, there's thousands of people doing it, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people. Um, but I can't. I can't show you, I can't make you have the light bulb moment, I don't think. I don't think I have that ability to make you see yeah. what I see when I read that book. And there's many things to see. It's 92 pages. There's a ton to see. There's a ton to think about. The problem is, the problem is simple, but the problem is also complex. Um, but if you don't understand the problem, you know, you want to see numbers on a page, you want to see the illustration, that's all. We'll get to that. We're not, you're not... You don't know what you're looking at yet. Looking at an illustration is not the infinite banking concept, no. right? That's just numbers on a page. Why you're doing this, why do you want to pay high premium? What problem are you trying to solve? Um, I, like, I, like to get, I like to get to that point. And then they ask, well, how much premium should I pay, Paul? Should I pay, Dave? Well, that's, that's not the right question. You don't understand what we're doing here yet. You're still looking at this as a bill. Yeah. And it's not. Yeah. <clears throat> I generally, uh, you know, and I don't tell people to do anything other than encourage them, you know. That's right. To read and learn and think. But it's in my opinion, and I don't go anywhere without it, right? And, um, <clears throat> you know, a little bit jaded and... Uh, you know, if it's, if it's uh, you know, not a legitimate number, you know, if it doesn't cause you to pause and think, you know, and if, if it doesn't cause your spouse to question, you know, it's probably not a big enough premium. That doesn't mean that's where you have to start. Mm-hmm. But if it doesn't, you know, cause you to break out with little sweat beads, you know, and your spouse really doesn't look at you and like, what? it's probably not a big enough number. But starting where you're at is the most important thing. That's so right. whatever that number is. Yeah. Yes, <clears throat> and then when we start, you know, it's thirty-seven fold. It was typical, non-par whole life, um, which you know, if you think about that, uh, and so now it's thirty-seven fold the premium that he's paying. I bet, I bet you haven't bought any more policies either. Right? Uh, not since uh, mid last year. I mean, well, I mean, I'm so, talking about some when you started in 2010. You haven't bought any more, right? Oh, right. I I went yeah. from three to now thirteen. Right. Um, and I, I'm not even. <clears throat> getting close to getting warmed up as far as I see it. Yeah. And, and I mean, I think that's natural. You know, we all find our limit, you know, the life insurance companies are going to tell you soon enough that you, you know, you can't have any more life insurance or we're not going to let you pay that premium or we're not going to let you have that death benefit. But typically it's, and I know it's been y'all's experience too. It's been mine. Once you get started, you're like, Oh my gosh, what's wrong with this? What, what's wrong with me that I'm seeing something no one else is seeing, you know, and, I mean, I promise I look for the problem for the first four years while I'm writing those little old dink checks, you know. <laughs> um, but then once it's like Katie bar the door, you, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> continue I, buying, continue paying premium. Yeah, I thought I started big enough. You know, it was like when we got our first boat, Tammy and me. 
It was an 18 foot Larson. Nice little boat. It was 23,000 bucks, you know? And uh, I was like, oh, this is the last boat we're ever going to need. It's going to be great. <laughs> like, oh, it fits eight people. You know, there's this much space between like the bench, the, the, the driver's seat in the, in the, and the other seat here, and then the, the bench seat in the back, there's like this much space. Like oh. you, you can't move around unless you're like Anthony's size, right? Um, and of course, a few years later, we had to buy a, bo- a boat that was more expensive, way bigger, and more appropriately sized for what we needed, right? Bigger in June. Yeah, yeah 350 mag, 300 horsepower. <laughs> yeah, he's a car guy. <laughs> Chevy small block. Yeah, it goes, it runs great. Um, so with my initial four policies from Dave, you know, I was like, oh, this is, you know, a 37 fold premium. This is great. You know, within, within, you know, 15 months of those policies being issued, I more than doubled that premium. Yeah. But like, if you've been paying premiums for 15 years, there was substantial cash value in there because there, even there if it were. was non-par. Yep. Yeah. And all that 1035 exchanges and the basis, you know, yep. 1031 in real estate, 1035 in life insurance, there's some value in there. No question. Not that you should run off an exchange or replace policies. I'm not encouraging that. I'm just saying it's the, the policy wants you 1035 exchange with Dave. It was good and and better. No structure was better, premium better, you know, the whatever and the dividends, it's participating where it wasn't. But all of that previous effort, you know, that you had paid those premiums through the years begrudgingly, maybe thinking it's a bill, struggling maybe sometimes, there's a lot of value that that policy couldn't be what it was when you ten thirty five exchange without all of that previous premium payment. Right, correct. You know, so um, I like to point that out just so because it, it wasn't a waste. Absolutely not. Right. You know, no, it, it was, was money that liquid. It was liquid cash that we that we that we had. Um, yeah. And I got to move it over in a tax favor. Did you ever borrow money. against them? Never did. Right. Never did. I know. You know, I look back at the old because I still had paper contracts back then. They were uh, you know, I think they were policies that were they were paid up at 100. Yep. Um, back then, because they were all issued in 03, 04 or 06, whatever they were, they were older, um, but never did. But you know, the, you know, policy loan provisions right there in the contract, eight percent at the, you know, at the time the contract was written. I'm sure it was never not eight percent, probably. But um, yeah, even totally could, totally could have borrowed money. And I have client, and I have friends actually that have non-par policies yeah. through that same brokerage that borrow against their cash value, you know, what, what little cash value they have relative to the premium they've paid, but yeah. they use them. So is it, are you on boat number three or is number two the boat that like, it's the last boat you're ever going to need? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> now, mean, I'm we, sure there's no lakes around you in right, Kentucky, yeah. wherever you're moving. Or. So we're moving, yeah, we're moving to Tennessee and Tennessee. we're going to be, we're going to be right on, well, not right on the water, but I can see the water. I can see uh, the Tennessee River. Oh, okay. uh, So we're going to be on there and uh, I got one more, one more boat after this one probably this one <laughs> a natural expansion of his boat system uh, just a bigger boat yeah and we're and we're, in, and we're inheriting one as well mm, actually you need more than one boat well this one you can sleep on and like know, a house over, boat. like an overnight in case you get in trouble yeah yeah, it's yeah. The, yeah it'll, be the, it'll be the dog house yeah uh, i know yeah but it's an old it's a 1996 boat yeah but it's in great shape you know, her parents have uh, owned it for yeah. Since then, and uh, they impeccably be made. Ten thirty one or ten thirty five. You can trade both them in on the new one, right? Uh, <laughs> Bigger, you can sleep on it. Goes fast. <laughs> <I> mean, <whatever. laughs> well, the the size boat that they'll give us to get into a new one now, it's not even close. Have they gone up like everything else? And yeah, I mean, they paid one hundred and sixty thousand for this boat in nineteen ninety six. Wow, to That's get into an equal boat now, it's. Three hundred seven fifty. Wow. Oh, maybe a million. Oh, so it's not. It's not even close. So it's it's yeah. a great boat. It's perfect. Yeah, great boat. I'll take it. It's inherited. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And it has family, you know, meaning, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So that's that's more important to me. Right. So what are the requirements? I want to go back. Y'all have requirements. Um, you know, they can't just like, oh, I like you and I trust you and I want to be just like you. And <laughs> you know, what are what are the what are the requirements for? people to become y'all's client yeah i'd say read the book and um listen to the podcast i think that's one of the greatest things is probably any question you have can be answered with an episode Mm -hmm. um so that's it's such a great thing when you can say hey just look at episode you know 93 
um, whatever hmm. to answer that question. Like, go to that one, and then let's talk. I should be or I should be organized, but I'm, I'm yeah. Fine. Well, we don't have three hundred episodes, James. Yeah, so yeah. it's a little easier. It's a lot to go through for us. Yeah, <clears throat> you know, I I like them to have a high level of understanding. You know, there's not much to discuss if they haven't read the book or listened to the, to the right content. Uh, our content, your content, a few others out there that that uh, that we enjoy. Um, there's not much to talk about because yeah. they don't know what this is. They think it's a they think it's a thing like it's a this is a financial product, just <clears> like <throat> you know, investing in the stock market or something or buying a mutual fund. And no, this is it's not that. It's completely different. This is a it's a it's a process, um, uh, and you don't know anybody else doing it. So please read. Please read the book. And then we have a, a productive conversation about sure. the material that's in there. And generally speaking, people who have, you can tell when they've carefully read it, they come with great questions. Yeah. Right? And mm-hmm. I can tell because they've, they've, you know, what are, I'm trying to think, page 58 or whatever. They've been like, hey, I had a question on, on this. The interest? Am I, yeah. Am I, am I, is, how does the interest work? Is it, it says, he says it's adding to the capital base. How is that happening? Like, well, he's talking about premium. And when we have a conversation, that's a very productive conversation that I've had with several very intelligent clients. Um, I missed it the first time. I just glazed right over it. Like, yeah, whatever. Like, yeah. They can, got it. Yeah. And which also means that you can tell when people don't or haven't or, yes. you know, loosely read or perused. Right. Yeah. And that's, um, it's counterproductive. Yeah. I think, you know, and I'm sure y'all agree, but, you know, I believe everyone should purchase own and read you know physically the book becoming your own banker nelson's first book his second book building your warehouse of well and then a third book a third book that i think you should own physically is how privatized banking really works um you know and, and the becoming your own banker now is available on audible and you know, there's a digital version of how privatized banking really works. I'm not sure about building a warehouse of wealth, Nelson's second book. But, I mean, that's a found that I consider those just foundational. You know, those are the first works. That is the source. It really becoming your own banker, right? <clears throat> and I've had that conversation many times where when how privatized banking uh, really works came out, um, you know, I think that was around 20, 20. 12, 20, 2012, 2013, and, yeah. and Nelson was coming to town in, in Waco, so we're in 20 miles south of Fort Worth, Texas, world headquarters of Banking with Life, but about actually one hour straight south of here in Waco, there's an agent, and him and his wife were hosting Nelson at the college. They had a nice auditorium top seating, and uh, him and I used to allow our clients to go to each other's events, and anyway, Nelson was coming in. And uh, and it was either around the time I'm not sure when they published Building a Warehouse of Well, um, but they were pretty pretty close in proximity. They were. Yep. Um, Nelson came. He was all excited. And he had uh, how privatized banking really works, which I had read, and and he said, James, you know, I think I'm going to encourage people to read this book before I have them. How privatized banking really works. Before I have them, read Becoming Your Own Banker. What do you think? I'm like, Nelson, why in the world would you say that? Well, that's what so-and-so said. And I think, and, I, and so then I spent, you know, some amount of time and, uh, strongly encouraging him why that's not a great idea. Um, so it's a good book. His second book is a great book. None of them, uh, you just, in my opinion, should start with this first book, Becoming Your Own Banker. It is an easy read. You know, here he'd been buying life insurance since he was 13. You know, uh, that was when his first policy was issued. His daddy gave him the premium when he was 14, the policy, and said, here, boy, this is yours. You pay the premium. So if you think about that, so he was born in 31, right? So we're going up about 45, right? He goes off to college, does his stint in the Army Air Force, becomes a pilot, and he studies as a forester, and and, uh, along about 1963, uh, 1964, and he'd been buying life insurance since 14, right? Bought a policy on him and him again, and then Mary, when they were married, he was 20, 21. Um, he buys a state farm policy from his brother, who was a life insurance agent in 1959. 
And so he becomes, Nelson becomes an agent in 1964. All right, so you go forward, and then he has his um, epiphanies and, or whatever you want to call them, you know, hitting the forehead with a two by four along about 1980 and 81. Right. Then that's when he discovers the infinite banking concept. And then, and then 20 years later, and then 20 years later, he prints this book in 2000, becoming your banker. So, um, these are great guys, very well spoken. You know, they can communicate in detail, conceptually, clearly. And I, I believe I can do the same thing. But you can't convey what's in this book in a podcast, a phone call, five phone calls. Nelson used to give 10-hour live in-person presentations. You know, now that's available today. You can go to uh, – you can get one on our website. You can access it digitally or you can own it. <clears throat> um, but those have even been pared down to six and a half hours, right? And so there's a lot of antidotes, content, analogies taken out from 10 to six and a half. My point here is it took Nelson 10 hours to go through his book is what he felt was adequate and, or at a bare minimum, I don't think he believed that was adequate. And so if, if someone's not willing to read that with the thorough reading of the legitimate attempt to at least be exposed to it, try to understand it. Um, it's almost like they don't care to me. Right. And and, because I sure can't do what Nelson did at all. You know, Um, it's like, if you don't care, I don't care. But by golly, if you care and you do, I mean, I can show you direct paths and these guys can too. You know, there is no shortcut in anything, but they're very direct paths. There's a lot of noise out there in the big wide world that you can step right over um, and you would ultimately benefit from that, you and your people. So I'm just, I don't mean to rail, but, you know, it's not, this is a really great idea. So just let me, let me, just let me go. Let me get started. It's like, yeah, no, you're not going to help somebody, you know, have a train wreck. Right. If you, if you want whole life insurance, that's easy. But if you want to do infinite banking, that's going to take some work. Yeah. You know, and it's going to be ongoing too. I think that's another great thing about this podcast is it's ongoing. Probably the biggest listeners are clients. Um, because, I love you all. If yeah. you're not a client, you have an opportunity, but I don't. Know. <laughs> yeah, but you, they, because they want to keep that learning going. Mm-hmm. Um, that's just the way it is. I wish when I started in 2010, I don't even think podcasts were really much of a thing. Um, I can't say I ever yeah, listened no. to any. It was like This American Life and uh, yeah. whatever, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I don't even know when I started listening, but when I did, then I finally had some mentors. I finally had, because this is one of those things where you feel like you're all alone. You're on an island. Absolutely. Because nobody else around you is doing this. <laughs> so you got you to gotta put yourself around other people doing this. And the easiest way to do that is podcasts, YouTube, the, the right YouTube um, videos. But listening to those weekly. I mean, I still listen to, you know, there's like three infinite banking podcasts I, I like to listen to um, because- do you listen to your own? Is that one of the three? Very rarely. Rare, rarely. Every once in a while, I will on like 1.5 speed yeah. because I was like, I think I think <laughs> one of us said something really great yeah. and I want to write that down and remember <laughs> it. <laughs> but uh, it's it's rare. I think at the beginning I did, but I mean. Usually I, for quality control. I mean, I I don't, it's no secret. I don't like the sound of my own voice, especially right now. I probably sound a little bit nasally. Uh, nah, but you, you know, t- great. T- t- thank you. <clears throat> My guys will make you sound better. Even, yeah. <laughs> Even better. Uh, but I like, you know, once in a while just to give it a listen when I'm, when I've, you know, I've already listened to everybody else's stuff or something. And I was like, you know what? Okay. This is, uh, it's listen. It's very, uh, it's good content. Listener friendly. Yeah. Yeah. It's listener friendly. But it's, uh, once in a while we talk about the weather too much or razz each other a little too much in the, in the early few, first few minutes. Yeah, so that's a military pilot. Thing. Yeah, They're sometimes. Yeah. Thing, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> Just checking yeah. for your scarf. Yeah. You know, well, right I, I keep a timer going. I'm like, it's been seven minutes and we're still just BSing here. We need to get to the meat. Yeah. Dave's good at keeping but, uh, us on. Yeah. Keeping us on. I don't, I don't, I like to kind of get in there, get, get to the meat. Yeah. Um, Cause that's what people want. Yeah. Um, but hey, we get beat up sometimes. I, I know I get beat up for talking slow or whatever. Just get to the point. <clears throat> no, the point is maybe uh, there's something interesting that you might have heard and you want to discover deeper. That's the point, you know. But uh, 
like you, you do feel like the Lone Ranger. You know, there's no question that was we I have we have uh, presented the Lone Ranger Award to our client. You know, in our client only events for a long time because it's true. You know, you feel like you're the only one. And what is that award? It's a Lone Ranger award, and it quotes a page, and uh, that Nelson mentioned that. You know, it's like, <clears throat> look, uh, start yourself like. You know, they used to call investment clubs where you get together, you know. Right. And, you know, you got to surround yourself with like-minded people. Mm -hmm. You know, we're going to get the Lone Ranger syndrome if we don't. Yeah. And, and uh, it's and it's scary to, to be a contrarian at the beginning. Mm -hmm. And then it's a point of pride. Yeah. Because, after you see the truth coming out. Because you know, either. you know the truth that other people are searching for, yeah. or maybe they're not searching for it. I don't know. But you, at the beginning, you're like, ah, I don't know. I'm actually doing the right thing because nobody else believes it. Yeah. But the more you go along um, and see it firsthand, you're like, okay, I know. Like, yeah. I'm proud to be a contrarian. Yeah. Um, and yeah, you just want to you want to share it. So the easiest way to share it is send them somebody else's content. Yeah. You know? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that was right. Good. Here, go listen to that. Let let this guy tell you about it. I was I was lucky in those early days. Um, you know, my my warm market. You know, my first. And I look at my, my book of business now and my first 29 clients were people that I knew uh, from the army, from high school. Wow, um, that's a lot of, you have a lot of friends, 29. I wouldn't call them friends. Oh, uh, acquaintances, okay. <laughs> 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 but, it, you know, it, looking back, it's like, wow, I, I, hang out, I hang out with a lot of the right people. Yeah. They have the right mindset. Uh, they have the right temperament. Uh, and they were able to see what I saw. Not that they didn't have questions. They yeah. should have questions, and they sure. did have questions, good questions. Uh, when I look at those that original list of 29, and I was like, there's some good people. I, I found it's kind of a, an interesting phenomenon when you go down this path, you start tightening your circle. Yeah. You start realizing, man, I've got less in common with, with most people than I thought I did, and my time's valuable. The time I want to share with people yeah. is valuable, and I want to share that time with people who uh, – who we can grow together with something. So I guess my my circle has gotten much tighter, um, yeah. more quality than quantity. I guess yeah, you could I say. think that's natural. <clears throat> you yeah. know, y'all are taking time away from your family, like last night, today, and tomorrow, just by flying down here, right? Yeah. Well, I got seven kids, James. So anytime you want me to fly down here, just let me know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm home twenty four seven. Poor wife, right? Yeah, yeah he yeah. works from home now, so he's yeah. You know, yeah. we have a sweet spot to when we record, but they do very well. They go up, you know, he's got a big house now. And well, I have to do a lot of, a lot of yelling before we hit yeah. record. Stay off the level. Go downstairs or upstairs. <laughs> Stay off this level. Don't come down. And he's too cheap to put a door on his office. I'm trying to get a door on my office. My contractor just, he won't put me on a schedule because He's got some beautiful built-ins, though. No, yeah. Those look nice. Office is coming together. Yeah. Thanks. I'm sure he's not the only contractor. I'm just saying. <laughs> I know, but I like to work with somebody I know. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather give, I'd rather pay somebody who I know, you know, who's a friend. Mm -hmm. um, so I'll wait for him to come around because rather than, it's kind of like, I like to keep my financial circle tight too. Yep. I like that money rotating within the same uh, yeah, group keep, because, keep in the community. yeah, we're, we're all like-minded. I know your values. And you're the kind of person I want to support, right? That's the way I see it. Uh, I, I mean, I agree that the the, <clears throat> the circle does get tighter. It's like the Fockers. I use that analogy <laughs> often. You know, meet the Fockers. It's like you know, there, there's a circle. You're yeah, in the yeah. circle, or you're out of the circle. Yeah, I mean, you know, um, we have. I think we have a very cool vibe in the office. We have great people here. Our clients are beautiful. They're wonderful. They do care. And um, so, I mean, I understand that. And not everybody's a good fit, but most of the time, a newer agent or somebody just getting, you know, licensed into the industry. And I, you know, I work with a lot of new agents um, and it, it all generally like, oh, my gosh, it's the greatest thing ever. I love everybody. And I just want to help everybody. And it's, and it's true. Um, but I think what you did is it should almost be a requirement. You know, you referred a certain amount of people to him and you went through that kind of process with them at some level, the people that you're referring to, um, which would, I would think then would give you an idea of what the, you know, the business side of all this looks like. And it's not all pie in the sky and easy. And you just, you know, wake up every day and the life insurance companies are throwing money at you in the form of commissions and they're high and you're a money whore or 
commission dog or hound or whatever you know it's not really what people think most of the time but um and then you run out of friends most of the time people run out faster than you with 20 (laughs) yeah right well it's still funny i'm tammy brought this up the other day i'm still i've still got warm i've still got friends um that are coming through you know four four years into this thing yeah like hey bob and listening to what you've been saying for two years on the podcast and I've been, you know, just silently, you know, people are just silently listening or mm-hmm. I've read a lot of, you know, cause some, I go through these spurts where I'll blog about it on, on my personal Facebook page. I'll just put out and that's, and I did that early on as well. I did yeah. that early on like, Hey, this is what I've discovered. This is what Tim and I are doing. These are the moves we made. We stopped our 401k contributions. We did this, we did that. And, and lo and behold, that resonated with a lot of people. Yeah. Uh, people were, I was getting private messages on Facebook. I remember back then Dave was like, where are your clients coming from? And I was like, well, I, I don't know. These are all people I, I know these people. Um, so, I, so yeah, but, but you're right. It's not, you know, the, the early success I had is I consider myself very, very lucky. Um, but I also have a lot of passion for it. Yeah. Like I, I love this. Right. And it's not just one of the five things or 10 things he does or I do. Right. It's, it's yeah. like the thing. Right. It's, uh, and I don't want to do anything else. We've talked yeah. about that too. I don't want to be everything to everybody. Yeah. Uh, recently had a prospective client that uh, decided to go work with somebody else, which, which happens in the business. Right. Um, as, as you know, um, and I don't lose clients. They come to me. Yeah, okay. that's right. Yeah. Oh, my we, we all lose here. clients. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but you know, you know, brought up like you know, trust structures and 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 this and that with the family, and I was like, well, I'm I'm part of that process, but I'm I'm not an attorney. I'm not going to dr- draw up your trust documents and and for the state of Virginia or do this or do that. Like, but I'm I'm the guy that can design the product and teach you the process to do this massive wealth transfer to the next generation and generation after that and the generation after that. Let's say, yeah. um, so you know. Hey, that that happens, and I can do that at a very high level, right? Yep. But and it that, it doesn't have to be complicated. But sometimes, and you know, I've spoke about it before. I think Ryan and I have talked about it several times. But the uh, the complexity, you know, oh, the more complex I present this, it's like oh, the that sometimes is easy for a viewer to assume. Oh, that complexity that increases the value, mm. and you know, God bless them if they're practicing within their professional or personal abilities, but. You know, I see a lot of times where it's like, you know, it, it, it's you're it's overly complex on purpose, and you know, almost as if there's an advantage being taken because this is so complex, the consumer can't understand it. So then they have to like and trust you, and they can't really vet it. Yeah, you know, right. and it's like, <clears throat> no, I mean, life insurance, eh, and I'm not, <clears throat> I don't give legal advice. I know some of the best attorneys across the country. And a lot of them are older, retiring, and are really successful, not taking new clients or whatever. So if you're an attorney that uh, is listening, you know, thank you for listening. And uh, if uh, you know if you're if you if you're taking potentially new clients and you understand the infinite banking concept, give me a shout. You know, I might uh, spread it around for you. You know, uh, okay. A, a life insurance policy, Nelson Nash, right? And if you think about it. There's three primary participants in a trust, right? There's the grantor, the trustee, and the beneficiary, right? The grantor puts everything in. The trustee controls everything for the benefit of the beneficiary. And we can make it a lot more complex than that if we want. Oh, look at the three primary participants in a life insurance policy, Hmm. right? There's the owner who is typically the payer. They don't have to be the same. And then there's the trustee, you know, all that money's going to the life insurance company in the form of premium. It is not your money. Um, it becomes the property of the life insurance company. And they therefore act like the trustee, the steward of that capital for the benefit of the beneficiary. So, and, and we can complicate it, you know, as much as you want, right? And I can sell myself anything between here and the front door, even <laughs> though I'm the worst salesman, right? Um, okay. It's like, well, then if I think that through, the life insurance is, operates as a tax, a pre-engineered tax-free trust. 
right? I don't have to pay the trustee. I don't have to meet with the attorney. Um, I don't have to do all that. I just pay a premium, right? And then, and then as the owner, I'm in control of the beneficiary and an awful lot. So mm-hmm. my point is it can be very simple. It's not, I mean, you can get it. You can understand it. Don't let anybody, you know, encourage you to think otherwise. You, you are more than able, more than capable, and more than smarter. Nelson Nash doesn't give above third grade math in this book or the other book. Neither does it get above third grade math in the uh, how privatized banking really works. And then the other book that they mentioned, I don't particularly use in my practice. I mean, a lot of that stuff is just reprinted from you know previously uh, published material, and I'm not disparaging it at what whatsoever. Um, but it's it's not that difficult no you know no, I, I think that's what makes it attractive to people that, that's what attracted us to it i think is and I, and I always tell people this early in the process like listen um the the process of becoming your own banker has simplified my personal oh my financial gosh. life beyond i mean comprehension i have a fairly complex tax return now uh, which is super annoying as I just went through this construction loan underwriting process for the couple last couple of different states. And, oh my gosh. You know, for the last six months. And, and since I have that, I have a lot of these K ones from this and that and all this crap. Oh my gosh. I made the financial underwriting for my construction loan, you know, qualified income wise, financially, all the things. But because I had all this, I had to call Dave and like, Hey, can you send me the operating agreement for, you know, this LLC or, you know, whatever. Um, I like the fact that I have no 1099. I have no interaction with the government whatsoever because I own this whole life product. It's wonderful. Yeah. When they say, well, what do I need to, my tax returns? What do I need to do? do? What do I need to tell my CPA? Uh, Nothing. Your policy is not a mech. So nothing. Nothing. There you go. Uh, I love that. Yeah. I mean, what do you tell your CPA about your savings account? Here's Nothing. the 1099 for the nickel well, of interest you got. Yeah, but you, so you may not even get that. But probably nothing, right? You don't tell them how much you have in your savings account. It doesn't matter. Well, they already know anyway. I mean, the government, not the CPA. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, it kind of fits into the, you know, as you as you um, evolve. I don't remember the terminology, but as you age, maybe as I I'm, as I age, we're all having birthdays as we talk. You know, time's just clicking by. It's it's like it's simplicity is a virtue. You know, the the circle getting smaller. I mean, there's a it fits into like oh, I can pay premium and. It is going to do what it does, you know, internal rate of return on the death benefit, cash value and a loan and all that, which there's a bunch of stuff out there about that. But these policies do very well, right? And I don't have to deal with renters. I don't have to deal with taxes. I don't have to deal with repairs. And I'm not, you know, I like real estate. I, I like real estate. I'm not disparaging real estate at all. I don't have to worry about deadlines and limits to the extent in which you would have to if you were participating in qualified plans, right? There are deadlines for premiums and there are limits to premiums. Well, and all the changes. Oh, my god! Every gosh. year, it could be another change. Yeah. You know, with the whim of Congress. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, if you go back to the estate planning, you know, it's like, mm-hmm. Yeah, what's it cost when your estate gets more and more complex and, you know, has to be adjusted at the whim of Congress, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and I'm not I'm not disparaging a state plan, man. If and if you if you need legal work, seek an attorney and a comp, a competent attorney. You know, if your estate values are over certain limits, and in which, I mean, you you probably you do need you. If they're over certain limits, you know, I would highly encourage you to seek an estate planning attorney or the referral from your current attorneys, whatever that looks like. Don't, you know, don't be one of those people that's like, nah, you know, I can draw, I can get this off download from uh, yeah. the internet, you know, right. a, a trust or an LLC or, you know, this agreement or that agreement. No, 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 no. And especially in Texas, Texas has its own language in the law, right? And not every state is the same. It's okay to hire the expert, the professional to uh, take care of your legal work, right? And at the end of the day, if you don't have a will or a trust or whatever, your state already has one for you. Yep. It's just not necessarily in the favor of you or your people. You have no control over it. None. So you're going to force your people to be spectators. And 
there may be a better way is all I'm saying. I'm not even trying to be preaching. I'm just encouraging. Yep. All right. <laughs> okay. But it, it does fit into that, that like, <clears throat> you know, the, the circle gets smaller, you know, um, pretty easy to just pay a premium, watch it. You know, you're going to access it, you know, through loans, loan repayments or passive income whenever you choose to take passive income away oh, and leave a tax-free remainder to your beneficiaries, uh, that's a lot of control. And, oh, my gosh, the older I get, I'm not saying I'm lazy because I'm not. I, I mean, it's been a part of my philosophy my whole life. You might know more than me, but I think I'm pretty convinced I can outwork you, whomever you are, right? Um, but the older I get, the less I'm interested in, in doing all that. Hmm. But I'm still not lazy. I'm just like, yeah, nah. I'd rather <laughs> hang out with my daughter. I'd rather hang out with my wife, you know, so. Yeah. Well, I love what you're saying about all, all the benefits. You're spending pennies today to get dollars tomorrow. That's but funny. guess what? You, get, <laughs> you still have access to all those <clears throat> pennies today. Yeah. Which is the, the, if the life insurance companies in, would have or could have invented this, created this idea, the whole uh, – idea of life insurance and, and, and the, the negativity that's surrounded by, you know, surrounding the life insurance industry, the agent, the advisor, the idea that life insurance is bad, uh, it might not be that way if the life insurance companies realized who they were and what they actually are doing and kept the idea of mutuality and, um, you know, the it, things could be different. Of course, things if things were different, they could be different. But you know, the I I'm just the life insurance company didn't create this idea. This is a bottom up. Nelson Nash discovered this idea. I don't care, and I'm not interested in debating. You know, you can believe what you want to believe. It's my opinion. I choose to believe that Nelson Nash j- discovered this idea. That does not mean that life insurance with cash value doesn't have a loan provision. Of course, it does. The life insurance companies created the loan provision so you could pay a premium and keep that policy from lasting. Completely different idea and concept um, from becoming your own banker, right? Okay. Um, so I I don't mean to rant. I'm just saying that it's really simple. You can understand it. And life insurance uh, products might not have as a negative a connotation as they do today. If the life insurance companies would have thought different. Well, they didn't. Right. But maybe you can think differently and maybe you can change the uh, the outcome of, you know, your life from this point forward in, in, in the next generation or two. I mean. Yes. And if you can't spend, I don't know, what is it, three and a half hours to read a book, Becoming Your Own Banker? That's fair. If you're slow, that's what it took me about, I think probably took me about four hours. I'm a slow learner. I had to reread it and reread it and all that. But, I mean, it was it's worth the effort to read that. I mean, at least you're going to learn something. Maybe you learn that this is the worst thing ever for you and you should never do this. And every life insurance agent, you know, has uh, character flaws. Like There you go. But how do you know on. it's not for you if you haven't? Exactly. Learn what it is. Yeah. Right. So, I mean, just get educated and make a decision. Yes or no. This is or isn't for me. But Mm -hmm. until you read that and understand what you're talking about, you can't make that decision. I like what you said earlier. You know, Nelson, you say uh, most people's understanding of life insurance is based on somebody else's misconception. Well, now think about that. Hear that with an open mind for a moment. And it's like it in in. Maybe you don't really have a thorough understanding or a, and I'm not talking about becoming a life insurance expert, but maybe you don't really understand life insurance beyond the product that you have. Maybe you don't have an understanding beyond some of the life insurance agents or what have you, right? So that's their understanding. So that's like a secondhand understanding, right? And about half of that are going to be misconceptions if you look at articles like what Gary North wrote and, you know, Dave Ramsey, Susie Orman and these you know, these designation groups. And there's even groups within the infinite banking world who think they know what they're doing and they could be, you know, really great people. <laughs> but um, right. anyway, it, it's okay to get your own understanding of life insurance or the infinite banking concept, right? As Nelson Nash created, it, it could be fun. Anyway. Amen. Yeah, no. Amen. <laughs> okay. Well, look, so we've gone about an hour and a half um, ish. Do y'all want to share anything in closing or um, 
you know, we'll put the link to y'all's podcast in the in the notes. Um, you know, I, I, I enjoy these guys. We're friends. You know, I know. I mean, I don't know everything that they do in their business, but I know that they're good guys, and you know, and they can shoot pretty well too. You know, pheasant hunting once a year. I mean, I get lucky every once in a while. <laughs> Even Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Even Dave. Yeah. Right. Um, and so, you know, I've I've been looking forward for them to come down. You know, they they agreed to come down and, and record about I don't know a long time ago. Yeah. Um, so. I appreciate y'all coming down and sharing with us and uh, and I appreciate you and everyone for listening. So thank you. Thank you for joining us on the Banking with Life podcast. If you're watching on YouTube, make sure to like and subscribe and click on that little notification bell. Otherwise, join us on Apple Podcasts and Stitcher for weekly content.